So you can see that our total boat sport dory is starting to come along pretty nicely now. We've got that one layer of bottom and one layer of the garboard planks on it on both sides. And uh, it really shows its shape at this point here. Now it's only showing the shape of the bottom, but you can see the rib bands on the boat and uh, you know the frames and the rib bands and the bottom and everything combined, it really makes the boat start to show its lines and it's kind of pleasing. Our dories have always been a pleasing shape to me in the first place, especially the round-sided dories of which I've never owned one. I've had some flat-sided dories, but I've never had a Swampskit dory, and I've always wanted one, so this will be the first one. I don't know how long I'll get to own it, but uh, at least I'll get to row it and take it out for a little, little cruise around and test it out and different things like that, so I'm pretty anxious to do that. But uh, I wanted to get to showing you exactly where we are with the boat right now. We've got one layer of bottom on it and one layer of garbage planks, and like I showed you, we're gonna put at least two layers of bottom, at least two layers of garbage planks, and they're gonna have carbon fiber cloth laid in between the two. Uh, I thought it was fairly important because like I had said before in a number of different videos, I'm out to make it as strong as I can make it. I wouldn't want it to fail right here. And uh, I've always thought that this joint between the keel or the bottom of the boat and the garbage planks was a, a, a joint that could fail fairly easily because years ago they only had fastenings to hold things like this together. They didn't really rely on glues and different things to hold things like this together or seams like this. So, uh, you know, to me I used to look at them and go, boy, you know, I like the boats, but boy, they look like they could fail pretty easily right along that area right there. And uh, like I said before, I don't want that to happen. So what I've done is done, done a little bit of engineering here. And uh, I think that the cloth that I put between the two layers and then the next layer and the opposing grains and all the things that this type of construction right here will add to this construction uh, is going to be such an advantage that uh, it's going to be a fail-safe joint between the bottom and the garbage planks and then pretty much I'm going to switch over to traditional construction from there up other than the fact that it's going to have plastic frames in it so you know and it also isn't going to have dory frames like a lot of dories have it's going to have bent framing in it from one end of the boat to the other you know I think it gives the boat a little bit more room and a little bit more um, well, there's some other things about that that I'm going to go over with you, obviously, later on, you know, about the framing of this boat and the way it's fastened and all these kinds of different things. But what I think I'm um, about to cover is uh, going into putting a second layer of bottom on here and then the second layer of garbage planks. And then when we're done with that, uh, cutting them to shape and fitting them, we're going to end up taking a little journey to Jamestown Distributors and peeling some carbon fiber off a roll up there, just enough for what we needed. We didn't want it here. We didn't want to save it or, or store it or do anything like that. So we've just left it on the roll up there at Jamestown. And uh, as soon as we need it, it'll be there for us. So uh, we're getting ready for it pretty quickly. But the next thing for us to do is to apply the second layer of bottom and uh, cut it to shape and bevel it off for the garbage planks to fit over the top of it. And that's what we're going to do. Joe and I are now going to lift the second layer or bottom up into position and just position it right where we want it. Now, it hasn't been determined exactly where it's going to go yet, so I get to knock it around just about anywhere I want it. And I've got a little bit off center to one side just so that it covers on both sides of the garbage planks here. And uh, this is something I had made up already in position right on top of the boat just the way I made the first layer. I had made this layer up quite some time ago. And uh, so now what I'm doing is positioning these lead weights all down the center of the thing just to hold it down as tightly as possible. And the next thing I'm going to do is just take a pencil and lay it on the garbage plank and have it extend up and have the tip of the pencil touch the bottom. And I'm just going to make a nice neat line on the bottom. That's an extension of the garbage plank itself. Uh, that's an extension of the garbage plank itself. Now, I'm going to go all the way from forward, all the way down, right past the midships, 
Now, I'm not going to let my end of the pencil rise up in any way when I do this, because if I did, it would make a squiggly line on the bottom side of the bottom, and I wouldn't want that. What I'm trying to do is make a nice uniform line along the bottom, and it's actually going to draw maybe an eighth of an inch wider than it needs to be because of the way you see the tip of the pencil up off of the wood that I'm trying to trace out here. And uh, when I do cut it, I'll probably cut it inside the line or very close to the line. So now I'm going to finish up the after section of this line on the starboard side, and then I'm going to just go over to the other side and take care of that side. Let's just flip it over and see what it looks like first. Okay, there's our line. That's fine. That's good. Okay. Let's take it right out of here. So I decided to make these cuts on the bandsaw because that's just about the easiest way to go about it that there is in the shop right here. Uh, you know, it's pretty simple. I've got someone to help me. Joe's on the other end of the thing here. And uh, it's a very simple cut. I'm cutting it at 90 degrees rather than cutting it at any kind of bevel because if you did cut it at a bevel and it bounced up and down or raised up and down when you were cutting, it would bind the cut a little tiny bit. So cutting at 90 degrees in a band saw is much easier and much safer and uh, much quicker. So uh, there's no degree of accuracy needed here. So the band saw, like I said, is the way to go. And uh, the only thing I can say is that uh, about halfway down, I've cut the excess off and just dropped that on the floor. That makes that a little bit easier. And then we just continue on on that side. And then we turn the piece around and make the other cut from the other side. And as soon as it's done, we're ready to carry it back over and place it back on top of the boat. The next thing for me to do is to just nail one end of it down into position here. Now, it's just not to nail it down tight, but just to nail it so it doesn't move around. And then I'm going to add lead weights down the center of it again, or from one end to the other. Once I've got it weighted down one end to the other, then I'm going to nail the other end. And like I said before, the two nails are just to stop it from sliding around. The weights are going to hold it down in position, and the electric plane is going to do the dubbing. Now, when I get started with this machine, I'm just looking to dub off all the excess material. Like I said before, I cut this cut nice and square in the bandsaw because that was the easiest way for me to do it. And the easiest way for me to get this down to the bevel that I want it to be at is with this tool right here. But you have to be awful careful when you get right down close to the garbage plank because you can eat into the garbage plank real easily. Now, I haven't lifted any bevels or made any calculations and done anything like that. What I'm doing here is using the heel end of the electric plane to uh, skid along the garbage plank to dictate the cut that I make on the outboard edge of the bottom itself. Let's do that other thing with Joe here. Now that I've got most of all the dubbing done here, I've got all the material except a very small amount left to go. And uh, I've just come up with a little method to hold that very edge of the bottom down nice and tight. You can see that it's just a little bit mobile like that. And I want to hold it down nice and tight when I do that final little bit of dubbing. So I've come up with this little process right here. I've got a piece of plywood with four weights on it. And that's probably... 20, 40, 60, maybe 60 pounds on there. And what we're going to do is just tip that piece of ply up on a little bit of an angle. Now, it doesn't have to go up very high, but what it does is it puts all the pressure right along this edge and holds that down nice and tight right there. So I can do a little bit of dubbing right there. And once I get it right where I want it, or very close to where I want it, I'll just slide that thing along a little bit. All right, let's move it up here a little can you need some more? Yeah, now parallel the edge of the boat like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Now you can see our technique and how well it's working here. You know, Joe's holding his end of the plywood up and my end of that piece of plywood is right down flat against the bottom. And all of those lead weights are really applying all the weight against my end and holding it down nice and tight. Now if I didn't do that, my end of the bottom or my edge of the bottom would spring up a little okay. tiny bit possibly in places and I might plane a little bit extra off of it than I'd like to. And I wouldn't want that. So, uh, you know, it just wouldn't do any good to uh, remove any excess material. That falls in the category of a mistake. And believe me, there's no boat in the world that I've ever worked on, whether it's building or 
repairing it, there's more opportunities to make mistakes than this one right here. So uh, we're doing everything we can do to avoid all those mistakes. And that's one of the techniques right there that we've had to resort to. And uh, it's done the job and done it really well. That's that side. Good job. I'm just finishing up the last few strokes with the hand plane here and I've got the very bottom of it nice and even with the edge of the garboard plank and uh, it looks nice and fair and true and I don't expect there's anything else that I'll have to do to it but I am going to inspect it from this point on just to make sure but uh, I think it's complete. And now I'm going to show you how the garboard plank goes on and covers the edge of the bottom plank. Now that I've got the second layer of bottom planking on the boat, I wanted to show you a few things. I've also fit onto it the second layer of garboard plank on both sides. Right now I've got one of them up in position, but I kind of wanted to show you this whole thing about how this goes together with the carbon fiber. With one layer of bottom planking on it and one layer of garboard planking on it, I'm going to cover it with carbon fiber cloth like so. Then I'm going to set the bottom down right on top of the carbon fiber cloth while it's still wet and just tack that down just to hold it down. Then I'm going to lay down the garbage plank right over that same layer of planking or that same layer of cloth while it's still wet because I just don't want to have any of this carbon fiber to cope with when I'm done. Once I've accomplished this whole situation, what I'm going to be looking at is wood, not carbon fiber. If I've got any little bit of a little imperfection in shape or anything, I could tune that out of it because I've got three-eighths of an inch of wood here to play with, and I could do that without going through the structure of my cloth. So I think it's a pretty neat situation, and uh, it looks pretty organized. Look at that. That's one layer of carbon fiber out from in between the two layers like that. So what's going to happen is our next layer of garb is going to cover it up just like that. And uh, I think that that's going to make a, a tremendous improvement in the structure. After that's been accomplished and I put that second layer of cloth over, it's going to get clothed over that again. So it's going to be quite strong when we're done.